Hello everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Nilav. So the topic that we are going to take up today is deoxyribonuclease or DNAs. So as you would all be knowing that uh, we had taken up certain lectures on the topic RDT. So we had made a playlist on RDT and in that only we have added multiple lectures on different enzymes. So uh, this is the next lecture in that series only. In this lecture, we would be talking about deoxyribose nuclease or the, this uh, uh, DNAs, uh, we call it in short. So, as the name suggests, this deoxyribonuclease, what will it do? It will break the DNA strand, right? It will break, break the DNA strand. Now, you would be knowing that DNA is uh, double stranded in general. So, what will happen? It will cut down the DNA. So let us go through all of this detail because this is important with respect to examinations even in gate and uh, CSIR net questions on different enzymes are asked so let us quickly go through this uh, topic first thing is that what does the DNAs do what are the what are what is the function of this enzyme so the function is the hydrolytic cleavage of phosphodiester bond so this PD bond is nothing but phospho phosphodiester bond so now you would be knowing what is phosphodiester bond what is a phosphodiester bond it is the bond through which the phosphate of one of the sugars or one of the nucleotides it is attacking the 3 prime OH of the other nucleotide so suppose I say that uh, So suppose this is a uh, sugar deoxyribose sugar if it is a deoxyribose sugar then definitely it should be having a 3 prime OH group over here so what will happen I'm not drawing the nitrogenous base etc I'm just showing you that how this is done so when there is another sugar and you would be knowing that this is the first carbon second third fourth and this is the fifth carbon to this fifth carbon there is a phosphate that is attached and when this phosphate basically at attacks on the 3 prime OH a bond called as phosphodiester bond forms right so over here there is a phosphodiester bond and through it only the DNA nucleotides basically are attached for example when we write down a T G G C this so this bond that we are referring to over here it is nothing but the phosphodiester bond okay I believe you would have got a clear-cut idea that what is a phosphodiester bond and this phosphodiester bond is broken down by deoxyribonuclease or DNAs it is a hydrolytic cleavage that means water is required hydrolysis will happen when you add up water this bond phosphodiester bond will break down Furthermore, I have certain examples also. I'll tell you with the help of those examples as well. Next, it can function both as exodeoxyribonuclease and endodeoxyribonuclease. It can function as both exo as well as endo. Now you would ask me what does exo mean and what does endo mean? Exo means whenever the cutting is happening from ends. For example, if I've drawn this, then the cutting is happening from this end or it can happen from this end this is called as exo exo means outside exo deoxyribonuclease and if i say endo deoxyribonuclease what does that mean endo means cutting somewhere in the middle it can cut up over here it can cut over here so endo means inside the uh, uh, the chain of the dna exo means towards outside or from the outside when the cutting is taking place i believe you would have understood this so exo and endo we have discussed next the point is that DNAs can be of different types. It can be of different types. So some of the DNAs can be of uh, exodeoxyribose uh, nuclease type. Some of them can be endo type. Some of them can be sequence specific. What does a sequence specific uh, means? that they would be cutting only at a specific place they would not go around cutting randomly 
okay they would cut at a very very specific uh, place and the example can be restriction enzymes so over here examples can be restriction enzymes so i have written that in bracket restriction enzymes and at times they can also cause random cutting that means no specific sequence is present and there would be a random cutting throughout the dna chain okay so i believe you would have understood this furthermore if i talk about then dnas can cut single stranded dna some of them can cut single stranded dna some of them can cut double stranded dna some of them can cut both so all in all what i want you what i want you to understand is that deoxyribonuclease has a tendency of cutting both or i mean to say double stranded and single stranded or it can individually cut double stranded or single stranded okay and plus it can be of exo deoxyribonuclease type or endo deoxyribonuclease type it can be sequence specific or random that means dnas are of different types okay so i have given you a brief introduction about dnas over here now i would be talking about some specific examples of dnas type so the first example and the very important example is dnas 1 so this is often asked in examinations also that is why i have chosen this example so dna is one is endonuclease now since i have already told you what endonuclease means endo means it would be cutting in the center not outside not from the outside but in the center so this is clear endonuclease thing is clear next it can cut if the dna is present in single stranded form it can cut if the dna is present in double stranded form it can cut if the chromatin is present what do you mean by chromatin chromatin simply means when the cell is not dividing the dna suppose this is the uh, cell or the nucleus then inside the nucleus there is a thread like structure that is called as chromatin the dna is present in this particular form that is why we are calling it as chromatin so this dna is can also cut chromatin plus it can cut the rna dna hybrid also what does the rna dna hybrid mean it clearly means that suppose this is a rna and this is a dna now they are having hydrogen bonds between them this can happen right so what will happen in this particular case rna dna hybrid the dna would be deleted from here since you are using dnas so dna would be deleted from here and only rna would be left in case of a rna dna hybrid so you would have understood this next what is produced after cutting after cutting the sequence after cutting the dna double stranded structure what is left so you can have a di you can have a tri and you might also have a oligonucleotide that means these are the products that are left after cutting okay so di means there would be two nucleotides attached tri means there can be three nucleotides attached and finally oligo means more than three nucleotides attached can also be present these would be the products of the cutting okay so you would get a 5 prime phosphate and a 3 prime oh terminal for each of the products that would be present i would be showing you that in a bit so the smallest substrate that means what is the smallest uh, uh, dna chain that you can give to this dna in order to function it should be a tri nucleotide that means at least three bases should be present c a g at least three bases a uh, double stranded structure should be present uh, it can because it can cut double stranded or single stranded so even if you give a single stranded structure then also it can make a cut but the minimum or the smallest substrate or the smallest uh starting point that you need to give smallest uh, template that you need to give that you that it needs to act on is a tri nucleotide next important point is it gets stabilized by calcium ca2 plus what does stabilization mean stabilization means that every protein or every enzyme needs to be in its activated form only then it will be able to perform its function right it needs to be in its activated form and then only it will be able to perform its function so that is why in order to remain in its activated conformation in order to remain in its activated conformation the ca2 plus is required ca2 plus will maintain its active conformation of this dna is one and therefore dna is one would be able to cut down the dna templates next for the optimum activity what does optimum activity means the best activity mg2 plus or mn2 plus is also required what is mg2 plus and mn2 plus they are basically 
डाई कैटाइनिक ओके सो देर इज टू प्लस चार्ज ओवर हेयर सो दे आर ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्ड इन ऑर्डर फॉर द एंजाइम टू फंक्शन प्रॉपरली सो सी ए टू प्लस फॉर स्टेबिलाईजेशन एंड दिस एम जी टू प्लस एंड एम एन टू प्लस फॉर द ऑप्टिम एक्टिविटी नाउ लेट एस जस्ट चेक आउट दैट वॉट विल हैपन इफ यू गिव एम जी टू प्लस एंड वॉट विल हैपन इफ यू गिव एम एन टू प्लस अंडरस्टैंड दिस देर वुड बी डिफरेंट रिजल्ट इफ यू गिव एम जी टू प्लस एंड एम एन टू प्लस लेट एस गो थ्रू दिस क्विकली सो इफ आई एम गिविंग एम जी टू प्लस रिमेंबर दिस सी ए टू प्लस नीड्स टू बी प्रेजेंट इन ऑर्डर टू Uh, in order for this dna is one to have an active conformation that is important but i'm just varying the mg2 plus and mn2 plus first thing mg2 plus if you use you might get you would get see uh, this is a double stranded dna you can see and on the double stranded dna there would be there can be different cuts okay there can be different cuts over here you can see this is one cut and this is one cut over here this can this is one cut this is one cut i mean to what i mean to say is that in case of the mg2 plus there are chances that you might get the uh, what do you say the protruding ends right there is chance that you would get a protruding ends right and uh, that causes basically the staggered end formation right staggered end or cohesive end formation would be present over here because this and this if they are they are formed if uh the on one strand it is cutting over here and on other strand it is cutting over here what will happen it will form the cohesive ends or the staggered ends right but over here if you are using mn2 plus then there are very high chances that both the strands would be cut at the same place both the strands would be cut at the same place and if both the strands are cut at the same place you would get a blunt end so by varying mg2 plus and mn2 plus you can get give rise to the different types of cutting i believe you would have understood this what are the applications removal of dna contaminations now you see whenever you are your aim is to isolate rna your aim is to isolate rna so you would not want dna contamination into that isn't it you would not want dna contamination into that if i do not want dna contamination i have to remove i have to remove this dna contamination how would i remove this dna contamination by using dna is one simple as that okay but at times you need to remember that often the dna is one preparation it is having some kind of a contamination of rna is a remember this that at times at times what happens is the dna is one dna is one preparation has a contamination of rna is a rna is a now if you do not know that the, your dna is one preparation is contaminated with rna is a you if you use both of if you use this what will happen your rna will also get distorted or it will also get broken up so you do not need to use this you should be very sure that in if if you have a rna dna hybrid you need to be very sure that your dna is one preparation is extremely pure now let us come to the point labeling of dna by nick translation now what is nick translation i have already given a video on that if you have not seen this i would highly recommend you to just go through that uh, series uh, go through that lecture of nick translation so nick translation basically means that uh, i'll just tell you in in very short this dna is this uh, uh, dna is one what will it do if you are using it under very very small concentration it will produce nick like this okay that means it would just cut at one base and will produce a nick and then you can go for nick translation i have already explained it in a different video dna is one food printing so this would be my next video food printing for now you just need to know that we in food printing what we do is we find out that whether the dna and the uh, what do you say the dna and a protein is interacting with each other or not that is the uh concept in case of dna footprinting so dna is one is also used in footprinting i will be making a video soon enough on the dna footprinting let us talk about s1 nuclease now this is another example of dna is one but this is i have deliberately written nuclease over here because it is a nuclease it is not just a dna is it can function as a dna is but it is not just a dna is because it has the ability to cut rna as well that is why we are using the term nuclease over here and not dnas okay i believe you would have understood this right so it is obtained from aspergillus oryzae now what is aspergillus oryzae it is a fungus fungus 
ओके सो एसपर जिलस हो राइजी गिव्स दिस एस वन न्यूक्लियस एस वन न्यूक्लियस हैज मल्टीपल इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टीज दिस इज हीट स्टेबल एंजाइम इट इज ऑल्सो ग्लाइकोसाइलेटेड नाउ यू वुड बी नोइंग वॉट ग्लाइकोसाइलेशन मीन्स ग्लाइकोसाइलेशन मीन्स एडिशन ऑफ ग्लूकोज इट इज ग्लाइकोसाइलेटेड एंड देर आर थ्री थ्री जेड एंड टू प्लस आयंस दैट आर इंटरक्टिंग विद ईच अदर एंड दे फॉर्म द एक्टिव साइट ऑफ दिस एस वन न्यूक्लियस रिमेंबर दिस देर आर थ्री जेड एंड टू प्लस आयंस दैट आर प्रेजेंट इन द एक्टिव साइट दे इंटरक्ट विद ईच अदर टू फॉर्म द एक्टिव साइट एंड प्रॉपर फंक्शन इन इज गारंटीड बाय दीज जेड एंड टू प्लस नाउ देर कैन बी डिफरेंट रिजल्ट इफ वी यूज this uh, at different concentrations s1 nucleus at different concentrations now if we use low concentration over here if we use low concentration then single stranded dna and rna can be cut down now definitely rna is also in, in general single stranded therefore single stranded dna as well as rna can be cut down when you are using this at low concentration remember it is nuclease that is why i am saying rna can be cut down endo and exo nucleate nucleolytic activity it has both activities it can cut endo it can cut exo also both both activities are present next five prime mononucleotides are produced five prime that means in general what happens is the five prime that with the from the five prime only the mononucleotides or one nucleotide only is formed after cutting because of the endo and exo nucleolytic activities in general what happens is the five prime uh, nucleotide is present okay is is formed as a result of the cutting at high concentration if i say that means dna and dna double stranded dna and rna hybrid and rna and rna double stranded if you want to cut any of these dna double stranded dna rna hybrid or rna double stranded you will have to utilize high concentration of s1 nucleus furthermore if i talk about nicking what will nicking and how will this nicking uh, ca how the, how can this nicking be done in case of s1 nucleus we talked about the nicking in case of this uh, uh, dna is one but in case of uh, in case of this s1 nucleus nicking can be done if you are using a moderate concentration of the enzyme right now this is the example you can see this is the uh this 5 prime deoxy or ribose uh nucleic acid or this is the chain you can see uh np np what is this n means nucleotide p means phosphate now if you cut it down through this uh, s1 nucleus then what would you get you would get this npn okay so this at the 5 prime end you are getting this and rest is this in the center and this is get you are getting at the end also because this is mononucleotide it can cut both the ends at both the ends exo as well as endo nucleotide so this is the concept of uh, deoxy ribonuclease i believe you would have got a, a clear cut understanding about this with the with the two examples as well as when nucleus as well as the dna is one so if you like the video just hit the hit the like button and subscribe to my channel also don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get any notifications asap thank you so much and have a good day